All right, guys, making a short video on an AR-15 trigger and problems that may result when you build a rifle or uh, put in a trigger. Um, obviously, this is just a mil-spec trigger. Um, so, as you build this rifle, you think, oh, this is awesome because... What happens is, is you put your lower together and you put your trigger group in there and you test for function. Well, everything functions just as it should, right? But that's because, well, I would, I would, I'm guessing here, but I'm guessing 90% of the time everything functions as it should. So, um,. The problem is, is sometimes you will think that your trigger is fine because you check the lower just by holding the hammer, you know, and then you pull the trigger and everything functions, it resets, everything's fine, right? But then when you put your upper on, you'll notice that when you go to shoot, you will sometimes get a double fire or a you'll pull the trigger and it will fire and then when you let go of the trigger, it will fire again. So... <laughs> Um, all, int all, all intents and purposes, you just made it a binary trigger, or you have a binary trigger, which is not good. Um, so, um, what happens is, is this extractor sits on here like this, sits on here like this, and your hammer is supposed to be like this when it's cocked, right? Well, then when you pull the trigger, it goes forward right hits then it resets pushes past your disconnector and onto that little hook well as you let go of the trigger the disconnector slides off the disconnector slides off and then it's supposed to transition back onto the sear okay what happens is is sometimes these these triggers can be out of spec and it won't transition from the disconnector onto the sear. And what, what the, what's causing that is, is there's too big of a gap. Let me see a little pointer thing. There is too big of a gap between this point and this point. So, what you do is, and, and this will also happen if, okay, for instance, I'm just going to use this example because this is what happened to me. Um, when I got this trigger, I polished the crap out of it to make it a little bit smoother. And yes, it did work. And I found out that my reset, my reset, like when it's up on the, on the disconnector and then you let back off the trigger and it resets back onto the sear, I found out that that was very gritty feeling. It felt like... I had rocks in my in my trigger in my fire control group. So that felt like shit, right? So what I did was is I if you look in here if you look if you look in here okay that surface up on the top of that hook okay needs to be smooth. So I polished that. There was mill marks in on the top of this hook where the disconnector hooks up, right? And I also polished the bottom of my disconnector so that it would be smooth. Now, I fixed my problem. It is now smooth on the reset. Problem is, is when I tested the trigger, everything was fine, just testing it in the lower. But as soon as you put the upper on there, what happens is, is your bolt carrier group pushes down on your hammer when it's cocked, right? And so what happens is, is it's pushing it down and it's creating too big of a gap between that point and that point. So when you go to pull the trigger, it goes boom, resets, back on the reset, your trigger is pulled, and when you let it back forward, it there's too much gap in between there, so it totally bypasses the sear, and then you get hammer follow. And now you just fired off another round on the trigger release. So, what you do to fix this problem is, and I've seen this on stock triggers too, um, but what you do to fix this, you do not have to buy another trigger. Don't, don't, 
get all worked up over thinking, oh, my trigger is shit because, you know, I didn't spend $200 on a drop-in. So what you need to do is shorten the gap between this point and that point. How do you do that? You file down this surface right here, which will allow this to, instead of sitting up like this, it'll let it come down more. Okay, now you don't have to do a whole lot. And basically, if you look right here, you can see the little marking. It's only like a two millimeter, just the tip of this, like maybe that much is sitting on there. Not this whole surface, but that surface got ground because I'm using this wheel and it's just, it's just that big. I probably should have used something like this. But either way, you take some of the surface off of this edge and you make that thinner. So then that way, your disconnector can sit down more. Instead of sitting up like this, it's sitting down more, which is causing this gap to close, okay? Now, what you wanna do is, is you just wanna like file just a little bit off of there or grind it with a Dremel or whatever. A lot of people advise against these, but I don't have time to sit there and screw around, so. I just dremeled it and I just dremeled a little bit. And then what I did was is I assembled my trigger back in the gun, I tested for function, and it's still too big of a gap. It's firing on the pull and it's also firing on the release. Now, I took my trigger back out, filed a little bit more off, put it all back together. Now it's working as it should perfectly. It's getting a reset. It's getting a positive reset. When I let off the trigger, it goes right back onto the sear. So now my trigger is fixed and working properly and according to the law. Um, if you are shooting doubles or triples or getting some type of a weird trigger malfunction and you go to a range with that <laughs> and and any law enforcement or somebody is 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 there or somebody reports you that you have an automatic um, or you're shooting doubles, you will get in trouble. So try to keep your nose clean, even though it may be fun to 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 sh shoot doubles or shoot on the pole and release. Um, that is not legal. So make sure you always stay legal when you're messing with these guns. It is very important. That is all I wanted to cover. And I, the, the, you know, once again, making this video because I can't find any of this info online anywhere. People, I have a feeling that when people's triggers malfunction, they automatically assume that their trigger is garbage and they buy a replacement. And I'm sure with the replacement, their trigger is fine because it's in spec. You know, there's like, I'm sure there's a variance there. Um, and so luck of the draw type deal on getting a trigger that's malfunctioning. So, remember, file this tip off in order to bring the hook closer to the sear point. And that will stop that. That will make a positive reset. And that is all we have today.